QuickBooks Online 2024 statement form. Get ready and some trail mix because we're hiking on QuickBooks Online, our audit trail to success. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online test drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening our major financial statement reports like we do every time, reports on the left hand side. And then in our favorites, we're gonna be right clicking on the balance sheet so I can open it in a new tab. We're gonna right click on the profit and loss, same thing, open link in new tab. Up top, looking at the middle tab now, closing the hamburger on the left, there's our balance sheet report. Tabbing to the right, closing the hamburger on the left, there's our profit and loss or income statement report. Back to the first tab, that's the setup process that we do every time we're going to do the data input in the first tab look at the results of that data input to the tabs to the right selecting the drop down we've been looking at the cycles customer cycle vendor cycle we jumped over here to the other area which isn't actually a cycle but these are the forms that don't fit neatly into the other cycles and therefore are being placed over here by uh, quickbooks so now we wanna look at the statement form, which is in this other section. So the statement form is a little bit different than what we've seen with other forms because most other forms like the ones in the cycles and in this other section, invoices, uh, receive payment, expense form, check form, and so on. Those usually enter transactions into the financial statements. These are the area that we typically go for normal data input processes same with the the bank deposit the transfer form those enter uh transactions the statement doesn't actually enter a transaction however but i think they housed it here because uh the idea most likely would be that if you're on an accrual system you're going to be wanting to send out payments to try to collect on the accounts receivable therefore this process is going to happen enough that you would want it here in the other forms so note that the statement form would only be used generally, uh, usually, if you're on a accrual type system, because in the accrual type system, that's when we send out the invoice and we have to track the accounts receivable, hopefully get paid on it and then record the received payment. That time period when the invoice is out and we're looking to get paid is when we might be sending out payments uh, or statements and reminders to try to to try to collect on that money so just to get an idea of that let's go to the sales tab on the left hand side which is kind of like the customer center let's go into the customers up top and and if i close up the hamburger let's close up the hamburger we can see that some of the customers might be owing us money so we might go up top and search on our filters and say i want to look for the open invoices and credits so if I go into that, now we have this nice little link that shows that some of these uh, customers owe us money or from either one or possibly multiple invoices. Now, if I go into a particular customer, if I go into this customer and I'm saying, hey, look, I need to collect on a particular uh, invoice. So I might say, okay, this one's overdue. If I hit the drop down here, we could send uh we could send a reminder right so we might give a reminder now notice that that's going to be so we could try to like resend the, the invoice or uh send a reminder so here's our reminder looks like this and we can populate it from an email we can tip typically send it out in an email uh and so that's great but if if I'm doing that for every customer, that can be somewhat tedious. You would think that we can automate this process because all of the outstanding invoices, I would want to send out reminders for possibly periodically, possibly every month or so, right? So we can try to automate the process. Plus some of these, like this customer has two outstanding invoices. So the question, the, the thing there would be, well, I would like to send out some kind of form possibly that will give them the information about both of those 
that are outstanding instead of sending out two emails to try to collect on. I want to send out one statement generally that has both of them included, trying to hopefully get the full payment for everything they, they owe me for the two invoices, right? So if I go back to the to the customers over here, uh, we, we one way we can think about doing that is you might say, okay, I'm gonna go to all of my uh, open invoices. So here's all the customers that have the open amounts and we could select them. So I might populate the all of them this way. And if I have a nice clean setup, everything's set up properly, then all of them would be needing a reminder that have these open invoices and then possibly I can use my batch action here and then say I want to create statements. So then if I open that, then it's going to go to my batch action into my uh, statement area. And now we're within our statements and all, all of these customers have been have been uh, pulled in to create a statement with. Now the other way we could do that, of course, if I close this back out is I'm going to say, do you want to leave? I'm going to say, yes, it would, it's even easier than that. We don't have to do the batch action anymore. I don't have to filter over here or do the batch action. I could just simply go to the, to the uh, hamburger, go to the plus button, and I can go to my statements here instead. And so if I go to my statements here, then again, we get to the same window. So let's analyze the, the different statements. We've got the three types up top. We've got the balance forward, open items, uh, transaction statement. Normally you'd probably be doing the balance forward because the statements you would think would be used most likely on an accrual based system to try to collect on the accounts receivable. So the balance forward, I, I believe the name is, is trying to tell you that when you look at the date range down here, the beginning date, any invoices that were entered prior to the beginning date will be entered as a balance forward. It's not going to give the detail, in other words, of the invoice. And then everything that's within this range should then be populated, uh, giving you a little bit more detail about the invoice that it's referring to. Uh, so that's the general idea. Now the statement date, we'll keep it here at the 123023 in our practice mode, which is usually gonna be, of course, the current day that you're running the statements. And then on the customer balance status, we could look at all of our customers and, uh, and apply, you have to apply every time or else it doesn't do it. So, but all of our customers might not have uh, open amounts. So normally you would go to the open items, right? And apply them out because that's who you wanna send the statements to. However, possibly you just wanna send out statements to the overdue balances. In other words, when you look at an invoice, 